Hello, it's Nick and today I want to conduct a UX review of Netflix. The goal of this video is to review the first time experience of Netflix user. We will discuss the Netflix landing page, account setup process, onboarding and the first time engagement with the service. Let's start with the landing page. The Netflix landing page is pretty minimal. The hero area features a value proposition along with essential details about the service. Statements watch anywhere and cancel anytime increase the chance that user will convert. When you start to scroll, you go through a few sections that describe the benefits of using the product. At the end of the page, you will find the frequently asked questions and answers about Netflix. Once you reach the end of the page, you will see a get started button. Which is great, because at this point you will have more information to make an informed decision. Pros and cons of Netflix landing page Pros. It has a clear value proposition. You understand what the service is all about and what benefits you will get from it. A FAQ section answers popular questions, so you don't need to search for the answers anywhere on the web. The downsides. There is no way to explore the collection of TV shows and movies. This can be a problem, because you don't know whether the show that you want to watch is streaming at Netflix or not. Lack of information about the pricing at this point. Also, you can check the FAQ section to learn about the pricing. Netflix doesn't show the price prominently at the beginning. Setup. Once the user provides email, they go through a three-step setup process. In the first step, the user has to provide a password to create an account. There is no option to use a social media sign-up, so you cannot sign into Netflix using your Google account. Next, you need to choose a plan. And Netflix is clear about the benefits of using the service, such as cancelling anytime or unlimited watching on all devices. But the problem is that Netflix preselects the most expensive plan by default. It's called Premium. Of course, it's offered the best video quality. Yet not all users are willing to spend extra money to get it. Lastly, you will be asked to provide payment information. Depending on your location, you have an option to pay using a credit card or PayPal. If you choose the credit card option, you will see the information about your plan and a call to action button Start Membership. Pros and cons of Netflix setup flow Pros Clear step-by-step -step process At each step you have to complete only one action, which makes the interaction really focused. Netflix offers contextual information. It provides all essential details to help you make informed decision. Downsides No option to sign in using your social media account. You have to create a password and remember it. Paywall Netflix doesn't offer free trials. So once you sign into Netflix, you start your paid membership. Onboarding Once you start a membership, Netflix will ask you to create your profile. You need to provide your name and mention if you are creating a profile for a kid. Then you will need to choose your language and select three shows or movies that you like. Netflix will use this information to provide personalized recommendations for you. Once Netflix finds a collection of movies that you are supposed to like, it will guide you through the interface. Netflix uses a contextual hint to explain how to interact with a product. The final step is model window with information that you can watch your movies on all kinds of devices. Pros and cons of Netflix onboarding Pros It's simple. Netflix asks for the bare minimum information. Downsides The kid option is unclear. At this point of journey, it's hard to tell what the difference between the kid and adult content will be. The user will learn that once they start using the service, but it might be unclear during the onboarding. Low efficiency of contextual hints Many users will simply pass by this type of onboarding because they want to start using a product as quickly as possible. Engagement Netflix has a relatively simple UI design. The Hero section on the homepage features the latest show the service selected for you. In my case, it's a crown. And then, when you start to scroll, you will browse through various collections of the shows and movies. There are a lot of collections to browse, so your eyes will scan a lot of thumbnails during the scrolling. Considering the fact that the layout is very monotonous, it will create a really uncomfortable experience. Netflix tries to break the monotony of the layout by adding sections like top TV shows in your country. But this feels more like a patch rather than a solution to this problem. Another problem with this layout is that every collection is horizontal scrolling list. It means that you can scroll the page in two different directions, vertically and horizontally. Altogether, it makes it harder to choose the movie that you might want to watch if you don't have a particular title on your mind. Because there are a lot of options to choose from and absolute freedom of choice, users often face a situation called a decision paralysis. As the number of options increases, our decision times start to increase exponentially. Enough about layout design, let's talk about personalization. Netflix attempts to help users decide what they want to watch next. Take a look at the cards with movies. 
The most notable element in this card is the match score. You will see green text like 97% match. This number is calculated based on your selection during the onboarding as well as your history of watching Netflix. The top part of the page, the hero section and the first few collections feature the movies with the highest match score. If you click on the details for individual TV series, you will see a nice window with information about the show, its episodes and more like this show. Netflix thinks about user journey holistically and wants to guide you to the next step, the next TV show or movie that you want to watch. Finally, let's see if I can find a particular movie on a Netflix. For example, I want to watch a movie called The Game. It's a 1997 thriller directed by David Fincher. Type The Game in the search field and you will see a page full of movies. But I don't see a movie The Game. Netflix suggests trying The Game, which is exactly what I've typed, by the way. But let's click the link to see what will happen. Now Netflix tells me that there is no movie The Game in its collection. And it recommends movies and TV series that I might like to watch. The problem is there is no explanation on how this selection was created in the first place. I suppose I see Crown because I mentioned that I like Crown during downboarding and Fight Club because this movie was also directed by David Fincher. But as a user, I have to guess how Netflix created this recommendation. Pros and cons of Netflix engagement. Pros. Content personalization. Netflix collects a lot of information about the users and their preferences and uses this to suggest the content that they like. A holistic view of the user journey. Netflix aims to increase the chance that users will switch to another show or movie after finishing the current one. Downsides. Decision paralysis. Netflix offers a lot of options to choose from and gives a user a total freedom of choice. It ends up in the situations where a user spends a lot of time finding the movie that they want to watch. Not really an honest search. When you search for a particular title and Netflix doesn't stream it, Instead of saying that there is no movie in its collection, Netflix offers a lot of alternatives that they are supposed to like. Yet the service doesn't create a proper context of how this selection was created in the first place. This is the end of our review. Let me know what you think about this format in the comments.